Hello everyone, welcome back to Into Sports. I'm your host Evan. Today I'm going to give you my NBA full standings predictions and eventually give you my NBA champion for this year. Before I start, do me a big favor and click the subscribe button if you're feeling extra generous. So let's go to the West first. My number one seed in the West for the second straight year is going to be the Utah Jazz. I think Donovan Mitchell is the most underrated star in the NBA, and I don't say that lightly. This is a guy giving you 34 a game in the playoffs over the last two years. And they've surrounded him with a team full of shooters. They shoot the three well, and they shoot it a lot. But they do have one big issue, and that is their defense is so reliant on Rudy Gobert. But if they face a team with a stretch five, and they can take Gobert out of the paint, they can expose him on the perimeter. And that's been Utah's undoing in the postseason the last couple years. Number two in the West, I'm going with the Phoenix Suns. The breakout team last year, they went to the finals last year, and this is really the same team. I do worry a little bit that they didn't pay DeAndre Ayton. That could be a problem down the line. Their owner, Robert Sarver, has a reputation of being cheap. But my big worry for this season, since Ayton is still on the team, is Chris Paul's health. But outside of that, I'm confident in the Phoenix Suns. Number three seed, Denver Nuggets. But when Jamal Murray comes back, I think the Nuggets are the best team in the West. They have the reigning MVP, Jokic. Jamal Murray, when they get him back, he's a dynamic scoring guard. We saw him trade 50-point games in the bubble with Donovan Mitchell. Michael Porter Jr., a.k.a. Kevin Durant Jr., is my pick for the most improved player this season. I think he's going to have a big year. He just got a big-time contract. They also have Aaron Gordon, who they traded for last year. He's athletic, versatile. And the only reason I even have them as the third seed in the West is because Jamal Murray is going to miss time coming off an ACL tear. But when he's back, I think they're the best team in the West. Number four seed, Lakers. A little controversial here. I am out on the Lakers this year. I think Westbrook is just a bad fit with LeBron. Now, he will give you good energy in the regular season, which is why I could see them finishing better than four in the regular season. But come playoff time, it won't work. Westbrook is a negative player unless he has the ball in his hands. And that's just a reality. That's not a knock. He's a good player. But when he doesn't have the ball, he's not a threat to shoot it. He can't space the floor. So actually, teams can play off of him and help on other guys. But in the playoffs, I want the ball in LeBron's hands. So Westbrook is going to have to play without the ball. So I think the Westbrook experiment in LA will be a failure. Now they also filled out the rest of the roster with a ton of veteran minimum guys. And people like a lot of those guys, you know, Car Carmelo. But there's a reason they're minimum guys. Some big names, but not big time players anymore at this point in their careers. Also, LeBron is no longer just a tier above the rest of the league like he used to be in Miami and Cleveland. So I'm not high on the Lakers at all. The number five seed, Golden State Warriors. Now this team is third in championship odds according to Vegas, the sports books. But I can't agree with that. Last year, they didn't even make the playoffs. And their big off-season additions are two rookies in the draft who are still teenagers and Klay Thompson coming off an ACL tear and an Achilles tear. Hasn't played in two years. So I don't think the Warriors are just that much better than the team that didn't make the playoffs a year ago. Mavericks at six. We all know Doncic is obviously great, but who do they really have around him? Because if Chris Stapps Porzingis can't return to form, then Tim Hardaway Jr. is not gonna be enough to take this team to being a conference finals threat despite the greatness of Doncic. Seven, the Clippers. Now, Kawhi is likely going to miss the regular season coming off an ACL tear he suffered in the Jazz series. Now, if he does come back for the playoffs, I think you could make an argument this is the best team in the West this year. 
but I'm not really sure what the timeline on Kawhi will be because nobody knows what Kawhi is going to do. But the Clippers at least did prove to be a solid team without Kawhi. They played the Suns pretty tough in the Western Conference Finals. Eight, barely slipping into the playoffs. The Trailblazers, but really it's the same story as every year. They're a good team, playoff type team, but they're not even close to being a threat to getting to the finals or winning a championship. So I think Damian Lillard, I'm surprised he hasn't asked for a trade yet. I think this coming off season is when he will realize we're not getting anywhere. I'm sick of being the eight seed. Let me get out of here. Barely missing out on the playoffs. The Grizzlies, we know John Morant's a really, really good young player, but pretty quietly, Jaron Jackson Jr., aka Triple J, has been playing really well, and him and Morant could be a dynamic duo of the future. Pelicans at 10. Now, I've talked about how I think Zion's exceptional postseason run last year is a good sign for Zion, kind of shows that he can bully his way through the playoffs. But Zion's injuries are starting to scare me to death. Right now, he has a foot injury, and he's also had knee injuries throughout his career. And, you know, that lower body, his weight puts a lot of stress on his lower body. That's a concern to me. And I also think there's a risk that the Pelicans lose Zion in the upcoming future because they've done a really poor job of surrounding him with the right pieces. Like this offseason, they lost Lonzo Ball, replaced him with Devontae Graham. Timberwolves 11, they have some nice offensive talent. Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, but they can't stop a nosebleed on defense. 12 Kings, they have four good young guards, and I love Davion Mitchell, who they took ninth in the draft. They could have a nice future, but not this year. Uh, 13, the Spurs, this is likely going to be Popovich's last year coaching with the Spurs, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to go very well. 14 Rockets, Jalen Green, he was the number two pick. I think he's going to have an opportunity to take a ton of shots, and he really could light it up on a bad team, put up some big numbers, but they're not going to be very good. Thunder at 15, I've talked about how I think they're going to have a really good and bright future with all their draft picks and really nice young all-star type player, Shea Gilgis Alexander. So those are my seeds, 1 to 15 in the West. Top eight make the playoffs. Now let's go to the East. Number one seed, the Brooklyn Nets. Now we know this Kyrie situation. It's looking like he's not going to play for the Nets unless they change, New York changes their vaccine laws. Now fortunately for Brooklyn, I don't think they need Kyrie to be a really, really good team. But the loss of Kyrie is going to mean KD and Harden can't miss games. They have to stay healthy. Reigning champions at two, the Bucks. We all know about Giannis's heroics last playoffs. It was incredible to watch. But I also think Drew Holiday was the X factor for them last year. And they didn't have any major offseason losses. So I'm going to put them at two. 76ers three. Ben Simmons is back with the team. So that's interesting. Now there's still the potential he could get moved in the middle of the season. But if he is with the team come playoff time, he's going to be a problem in the fourth quarter of playoff games. But with him, they are going to be dominant defensively, just like last year. Embiid, Matisse Thibel, Ben Simmons. To me, those are three top 10 defenders in the league. And Embiid is obviously an MVP caliber guy. At four, the Heat. They added Kyle Lowry this offseason. They do lose Goran Dragic, but it's still an upgrade. They're very versatile on the defensive end. They had two tough enforcers with P.J. Tucker, Markeith Morris. And their uh, top three is a really good trio. Butler, Lowry, Adebayo. Now, I was thinking about making a Tyler Hero joke, eh, but I won't this year. Five seed, another team that made some moves, the Bulls. They added DeMar DeRozan and Lonzo Ball in the offseason. And don't forget, last year, at the end of the year, they traded for Nikola Vucevic. 
Now, the team wasn't very good after they got him, but Levine was missing games due to COVID protocols. So it really wasn't a great representation of who they were. And I also think Zach Levine is this year's Devin Booker. People are going to finally realize how good Zach Levine is. He's a highly explosive athlete with big time range. And now he's going to be on the scene playing in primetime games in the playoffs. So people are going to finally see how good he is. Six Celtics, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. That's a great duo. But I really like their Dennis Schroeder signing. They got him for cheap and free agency. I think that's a big time value. I think Schroeder could be a big time difference maker for the Celtics this year. Now, even though I thought Brad Stevens was a really, really good coach, it seemed like it was time for a new voice in the locker room. They get that in Ime Udoka, now Brad Stevens in a front office role. Celtics, I like him. I put him at six. Hawks, seven, feels a little low, but I still like him quite a bit. Trey Young, we know he's special. We saw it in the playoffs last year, but I love the way that they've surrounded him with talent. They surrounded him with so many shot creators, so many shooters, and bigs like Capella that complement Trey Young, able to catch lobs at the rim. Eight Pacers barely sneaking into the playoffs. This is a team that really doesn't have a star, but they have five really, really solid players. Now, last year they had two issues. They didn't make the playoffs. Their issues were coach and health. But now they hire a new coach, Rick Carlisle, who's won a championship before. I think that's a big time acquisition. And they're not fully healthy right now. TJ Warren out with a foot injury, but they'll probably be luckier than last year. So many key players missed a lot of time. So I think they bounce back into the playoffs. Barely missing out is the Wizards. I think Beal could lead the league in scoring. He's averaged 30 at plus a game the last two years. They do lose Westbrook, but they upgrade the depth. And they replace Westbrook with Spencer Dinwiddie, who's going to be a pretty nice replacement. 10 Hornets. They, they actually kind of quietly started strong last season. But then when they lost Gordon Hayward, they struggled down the stretch. He was a lot better than I thought he would be. And LaMelo Ball. He was the rookie of the year last year. He is the ultimate playmaker. He elevates his teammates with LeBron-esque court vision and ability to make awkward passes. LaMelo is looking like a star. 11 Raptors. There's some friction between head coach Nick Nurse and Pascal Siakam. I wonder how that's going to play out. And they do lose Kyle Lowry, not only a great player, but also a leader in the locker room. Now, it's kind of weird. They actually get to return to Toronto. Last year, they played in, well, they play in Tampa Bay or Miami. They played in Florida somewhere. So they get to return home. This is a team, they're not rebuilding, but I think they're retooling. 12, this is really low for the Knicks. They were the four seed last year, but I just don't think they have enough pop offensively probably won't be able to repeat on the defensive end. So I think they take a step back this year. Then Cavs, Pistons, Magic, rounding out the East. All of those teams have promising rookies they got in the draft this year, but certainly not in playoff competition. Now, let me show you my final four teams. In the West, I got the Suns and the Nuggets. In the East, the Nets and the Bucks. In the West, like I said, when Jamal Murray comes back, I think the Nuggets are the best team in the West. I think they have four really, really good players, some depth with guys like Monty Morris. So I think the Nuggets go to the finals, a little bit of a shocker there. And then the, in the East, Nets and Bucks. Remember, the Nets, despite being really shorthanded in that series, almost beat the Bucks, if not for a Kevin Durant shoe size. They could have won that series. So in my finals, I have the Nets and the Bucks, and I have the Nets coming out on top. Even if they don't have Kyrie Irving, I think they probably will have him back come late in the postseason. But even without him, I think they can still win the championship. Kevin Durant to me is clearly the best player in basketball. James Harden, I really loved how he came in there to Brooklyn last year and moved the ball around. Their ball movement really impressed me, 
last year, I think the Nets are the best team in basketball. So thank you all for listening. Drop your predictions. Give me your NBA final predictions down in the comments below. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Evan, and I'm out. Peace.